This is Alfred's Basic Adult Piano Course, Lesson Book Level 1. This video is Lesson 7, which covers page 12, The Grand Staff. So at the top of page 12, it says the bass staff and treble staff, when joined together with a brace, make up the grand staff. So we've got a nice little diagram here that pretty much summarizes everything we've done up to this point. At the top, we've got the keyboard diagram showing us the five notes in the left hand, C, D, E, F, G, and the five notes in the right hand, middle C, D, E, F, G. Directly below this, we see the grand staff. And we see the five notes on the bass clef staff, C, D, E, F, G, and also we have our fingering, five, four, three, two, one. And directly below the keyboard, the keys for the right hand, we see the notation in the treble clef staff. And the five notes, C, D, E, F, G, and the fingering, one, two, three, four, five. So from here on out in this book, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see all the pieces of music on the grand staff. Because we are going to be playing with both hands from here on out. Now the next piece that you're about to play on this page uh, called Playing on the Grand Staff, you won't play both hands together at the same time, but both hands will be playing one after the other. Uh, before we get to that piece, though, let's look at the pink uh, triangle, uh, excuse me, pink rectangle in the middle of this page and the uh, important information here about something called time signature. Music has numbers at the beginning called the time signature. 4-4, four, four. this is the first time signature you're going to learn. This is actually the most common time signature there is in music. So 4-4 four, four means this. The top four means that there are four beats to each measure. So when we first learned about rhythms a couple lessons ago, we noticed right away that measures are divided by bar lines and every measure adds up to the same number of counts. So when you see a, a top four in a 4-4 four, four time signature, that already tells you that every measure is going to add up to a total of four counts. Now the bottom number, in this case four, means that a quarter note gets one beat. So the bottom number is not something you're going to have to really worry about changing anytime soon. Um, eventually we might see something in this book uh, like six eight time signature. And that eight means that a different note gets one beat. Uh, but don't worry about that just yet. For now, um, you've learned the quarter note gets one beat, and that's um, what we're going to stick to. Something else that's going to change. Um, we were counting, you know, quarter notes as, as one, 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 one. And we were counting half notes as one, two, one, two. And we also were counting whole notes as one, two, three, four. Well, now that we're dealing with 4-4 four, four time signature and every measure adds up to four counts, we're going to count from here on out up to four. So if you look at uh, playing on the grand staff, you look at the very first measure, just our rhythm. We have four quarter notes. Okay, and you see before those four quarter notes, you see our time signature, 4-4. Four, four. So this measure adds up to four counts. So instead of going one one, one, one for every one of those quarter notes. We're going to go one, two, three, four. So I still clapped out the, the correct rhythm. I still clapped out every one of those quarter notes. But why is it better to count up to four? Because if I said, hey, start on beat three, you would know to start on that E. But if I'm just going one, 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 uh, it's a little bit more difficult to know exactly where we're at in that measure. Look at the second measure. Normally, we would count one, 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 two, because it's a quarter, quarter, half note. But what you're going to do now is one, two, three, 
four. So I'm going to count, uh, clap, and count the entire first line of music here for you. And it even says here, the following practice procedure is recommended for the rest of the pieces in this book. And number one, they have us clap or tap and count. So I'm going to do just the first line for you, just that treble clef rhythm with our new system of counting. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that takes care of the treble clef line. And if you look below at the bass clef line, if you look carefully, it's the exact same rhythm. The exact same rhythm. Now, before we play some of the notes, I want us to go back to the first line and look in the bass clef. There's a new sign you're about to learn. It's called a whole rest. And it kind of looks like an upside down hat. Or another way to recognize it is a hole in the ground. You see the line? You see how it goes underneath that line? It's kind of like a hole in the ground. Well, that might help us to remember it a little bit more. Hole, rest, hole in the ground. What that means is, in this case, the left hand is silent for the whole measure. And you can look across this entire line only the right hand is playing, so the left hand has whole rests in every measure. The left hand is silent. If you look down at the bottom line, the left hand is playing in the bass clef, but now the right hand is silent. Therefore, the right hand has whole, mess, whole rests in every measure. At the very end of the piece, there's something else that's new. The double dots mean repeat from the beginning. So whenever you go to, you arrive at the end of a piece of music and you see those dots, that means you're gonna repeat the piece again from the very beginning. So this whole piece playing on the grand staff will be played through twice. One other piece of information at the very beginning, it says only the starting finger number for each hand is given. So this is a little different too. Up to this point, the book was giving us the finger number for every single note. Now they're only giving you the fingering for the starting note. It's up to you to determine the fingering for the remaining notes. Well, it shouldn't be too hard because after C is D and after our thumb is two. And after that is E, which is our third finger. So assign fingering. As long as you don't move the hand from middle C, if you don't shift down or shift up, you'll be fine. Uh, same thing for the left hand. They give us five for C. As long as your hand stays right there, C, D, E, F, G, assign fingering. Now, even though the right hand plays first and the left hand plays second, don't get in the habit of doing this. Because if you don't start with your left hand ready to go, by the end of that first line with your right hand, you may be here. Oh, and then, oh, it's too late. We've lost our steady count, our steady rhythm. So have your left hand all ready to go, even though it's not playing right away. So I'm going to play through this piece for you. I'm going to play it through twice. So we're going to have both hands up on the piano. Make sure I got my left hand C position. My right hand C position. We've already uh, counted these rhythms. So now we're going to play through it. basically it. So 
Um, nothing here too difficult. It's pretty straightforward. Just following the notes from C, D, E, F, G, and back down again to the C. A um, little bit of rhythm in there with that half note thrown in on the G's and the C's at the end of each line. Notice that when I went from the first line to the second line, I didn't pause, I didn't hesitate. I kept that nice, even, steady rhythm going. Um, that pretty much covers it. So um, when you do this piece playing on the grand staff, remember a few things. Remember your hand position. Um, remember that that needs to stay where it is because of the fingering. Remember your counting. Remember the new form of counting, 4-4, four, four, time signature, four beats per measure. So counting one, two, three, four for each measure, nice and steady. Remember to hold your half notes for two counts. And remember that when going from the treble clef line, the end of the first line, into the bass clef line, don't pause, don't hesitate, keep that steady rhythm going. And lastly, the repeat sign at the end. The double dots mean go back to the beginning and play through it again one more time. So that covers lesson seven, the grand staff and playing on the grand staff and our new time signature 4-4.